Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel, Dylan here. We have a massive bombshell of a video today from Governor Kristi Noem, who just came out and really revealed the truth about everything going on right now, okay? She just made one of the biggest moves to help Donald J. Trump win the 2024 election, all right? Kristi Noem, she's a powerful woman. She is unlike other Republicans like Rand Paul, like Mike Pence, who have yet to endorse Donald J. Trump. Kristi Noem has gone full MAGA to try to help save America, and she's doing everything she can. She just came out and spoke. She says that Tim Waltz is a national security risk. She exposed the truth about Kamala Harris. She said Trump needs to win. And she also sent a warning, an ominous warning to Americans. And I quote, she said, wake up, all right? So we have an absolute bombshell of a video today from Governor Kristi Noem, which I'm really, really excited to share with you guys. But before we bring her onto the show, we are gonna read the Bible and pray because God comes first, amen? Comment amen down below, my friends, if you believe God comes first. Today's Bible reading comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse six. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Comment amen down below. My brothers and my sisters, with everything going on right now, we are simply nearly one month away from the November election. And like Donald John Trump said, this is gonna be the most important day in the history of our nation, all right? Wow, but do not be afraid. It says that in scripture. I believe it says that in scripture. Maybe one of you Bible experts can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe it says do not be afraid 365 times in scriptures. I could be wrong, but that's what I heard. <laughs> but it's, you know, it, whatever it is, it says that a lot in scripture. Don't be afraid or terrified for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So everywhere you go, he'll be with you. All right, guys, let's jump in. Let's bring on Christy Noam. So this is Christy Noam exposing the truth about Tim Waltz. Remember, Christy Noam's a governor. Tim Waltz is a governor. So she has direct relationship with him. Christy Noam, who knows about Waltz from her time in Congress and recently and currently as governor of South Dakota, which neighbors Minnesota, where Waltz is governor. Uh, governor Noam, good to see you. Thanks for being with us. So again, you served, and I did too, with Tim Waltz in Congress, mm -hmm. but you've had the privilege of uh, being a neighboring governor of Tim Waltz. Tell us what you've seen. What kind of leader is he? Well, he's a bully, and he yeah. pushes mandates um, down on his people. In fact, we've seen a mass exodus of people out of Minnesota that have sought refuge in South Dakota, and they've come here to get away from what he's done to their families, how he's devastated their businesses by shutting them down, raising their taxes, increasing their costs, so that they can no longer cash flow and provide for their families. So, listen, this is a completely different Tim Walls than what we served with, Sean. Uh, when I served with him in Congress, he cared about people having their Second Amendment rights. He cared about giving people flexibility and freedom. We sponsored legislation together. He was from a more conservative district of Minnesota, but he completely changed when he became governor. Uh, we think we saw the real Tim Walls that he had been hiding for several years. He's got ties to companies in China. You don't go to China 30 times to be a tourist. Um, 30 times? Did Governor Christy Noem just expose that Tim Waltz went to China 30 times? To look at the sites, you go there because you've got an affiliation with their government. You go there and you take students there to learn from them. If you think communism is the way to um, better protect people, which is what he truly does believe. And he's got ties to companies in China, as such as the Beijing Genomic Institute that he's funneled money to. And that company has ties to communist and CCP leaders. Is there something else going on that the mainstream media 
and the Democrats are not telling us about Tim? So, you know, he truly is someone that wants to undermine the United States of America. We cannot trust him by putting him in the White House. Well, you're right. He undermined the freedom of uh, his uh, his constituents in Minnesota. But you're right. We served with him in Congress. He was a moderate guy, right? Because mm -hmm. he had a he had yeah. a very re Republican leaning congressional district. Huh. And when he was unleashed uh, as a governor, we saw the true Tim Walls come out, and it was crazy. You mentioned. Well, he finally became a governor, so he got more power. Right. That's kind of crazy. Uh, what's going on with the CCP? I want to talk about that. So um, he taught. Uh, uh, in China uh, from 89 to 90. Uh, he visited the country 30 times. He got married on the anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre. Um, he honeymooned in China. And to your point, he promoted Chinese communism as a teacher to his American students. So I think what this does wow. is it begs the question, is Tim Walls a national security risk? Absolutely. I'm 100% convinced he's a national security risk. Uh, oh my gosh, Christy Noem laying it out, guys. Share this on Facebook. This man wants America to grow up and be more like China, which is the exact opposite of what our leaders should be doing. I have spent all of my time fighting China, and for 30 years I've been working in policy right. on protecting our food supply, and we've seen China not only manipulate our currency, steal our IP, treat us unfairly in trade agreements. They've also spied on us. They've come in and out, and they're taking and buying our land. I have banned them purchasing land and doing state contracts in South Dakota. The rest of the country needs to realize and wake up that we do not want a leader like Tim Walls and Kamala Harris in the White House because of how they would undermine our national security. It's a big concern, and I hope we start talking about it a little bit more, that you have to have people in the White House that truly want to protect us, protect our republic, and fight socialism, fight Marxism. Fight These are sick people, guys. Communism, that's not Tim Walls. You know, Tim Walls' uh, leadership has been so bad, you have the western portion of Minnesota that's asking to actually cede from Minnesota and join your state. Are you serious? A whole part of Minnesota is asking to leave to go to South Dakota? If that doesn't tell you about anything about Tim Waltz, that's a warning sign to me, guys. Of South Dakota. Are you going to accept them if, it, uh, if that potentially happens? You're going to take part of Minnesota, sure. Christy? Yeah, we'll take, we'll take anybody that wants to be more free. But it's amazing if you look at the map of Minnesota, how little support he does have. The support he does have is in his bigger cities, but the vast That's majority it. of the land mass of Minnesota does not like his leadership, has left his leadership. We've had tens of thousands of people that have come from Minnesota and come to South Dakota because they find that he doesn't share their values and he's crippled them and their economy and they just can't stand it anymore and want to find somewhere else where they can raise their families and pursue the American dream. Well, I'm on the eastern border in Wisconsin, and I have the same thing. We have people leaving Minnesota and coming to Wisconsin. They want more freedom, um, and yeah, yeah. and it's and it's and we love their money, but it's it's crowding our rural areas. I want to quickly uh, go to this governor because mm -hmm. um, new polling's come out since the DNC, mm -hmm. and we see the races are are very tight. Um, we have Harris winning in, in Michigan, Georgia, and Nevada. Um, what? Trump up in North Carolina and Wisconsin, right? So the race has tightened from what it was. Mm -hmm between uh, Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Um, I guess my theory here is that this is a DNC post-convention bump. Want to get your take on the polling Maybe. where is this race going? Should Donald Trump be concerned? No. Are you serious? Kamala Harris is beating Trump in all these states? What the heck, guys? I think President Trump is doing fantastic. He's out there working hard and talking to people about how their lives could be different if he was back in the White House. So yeah, the race is tight, but also the media- <laughs> How is Arizona going blue? What the heck? Has been helping Kamala have a great couple of last weeks, but I think the truth is coming out after Labor Day, more Americans are paying attention and they're paying attention to their pocketbooks and they're paying attention to what gas prices are and how difficult it is to buy the supplies that they need for their kids to go back to school and making hard decisions. So this is where President Trump shines because their lives were better off when he was president of the United States. And I'll be in Michigan and Wisconsin, Montana, down in Arizona as well. I think as more people get out there and tell the story of, of what his leadership means to this country, what it means to families, what it means to women and wives and grandmas as we're running our businesses and our families, uh, raising them to be strong Americans, President Trump is the one who gives us the opportunity to do that. I, I tell the story all the time about when he was in the White House, he let me do my job. He let me be governor, make the best decisions for South Dakota. Uh, I've been done nothing since Joe Biden has been in the White House except be on defense, trying to protect our freedoms and our liberties. Uh, so there's consequences to leadership and it matters who's in the White House and we need President Trump back there as soon as possible. 
Well, the Nephi family went to South Dakota uh, during COVID, and it truly was a free state. We were grateful for that. And I think you're right. As we come through the summer when people are a little bit checked out as they're uh, mm -hmm. doing some more vacations and kids are off from school and we come back in September, that's when the American voters starts to pay attention. And Kamala Harris doesn't have policies to fix the economy, doesn't have policies to fix the border. She created the border crisis. So we'll continue to watch South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem. Thank you for being with me. Appreciate it. Thank you, Sean. Have a what a powerhouse of a woman, Kristi Noem. And she just came out and said, Trump is right about this. Let's tune in, guys. So Dakota Governor Kristi Noem joins me now. Governor, your reaction to Donald Trump's statement on abortion? Well, the president is exactly right. Um, and his thoughts and his heart is with women in crisis that are facing these situations with precious babies. And that Roe v. Wade gave this right back to the states, and that's exactly where it should be. Every state will look different. Uh, we may hold personal beliefs as elected officials. I'm personally pro-life, uh, but every state will look different, and it is about the will of the people. And I've never seen the federal government come in on a tough issue and, and offer a solution and fix it. In fact, the reality of a, of a federal bill passing through the Senate and through the House just isn't there. So why are we talking about it? Uh, people have more of an input and more of a way to frame their state laws and what it looks like in their state with their state legislators who are their neighbors and their businessmen and women. Talk to them and have that conversation. And that's exactly what President Trump was saying. One thing is for sure, though, that Roe v. Wade getting overturned was a massive victory for the pro-life movement. I'll say that for sure, guys. A lot of liberals were pissed at that. Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi probably cried themselves to sleep that night, guys. Now, here's Christy Nome. She just came out and said that Trump needs to win. Let's tune in. All right. Enough of me. Joining us now, we are very uh, grateful. Welcoming back to the show, South Dakota Governor Christy Nome. Uh, Governor, welcome. It's a pleasure to see you. Thanks for doing this. Um, last night, big historic win uh, for Mr. Trump, as you know, and he's got a great comeback going. I just want to play for you uh, what he said at Mar-a-Lago about success and unity uh, around the whole country. Take a listen to this, and then we'll get your comments. Okay. A tragic thing happened during the election. It was a tragedy because you wouldn't have think of it. All of the problems that you have today, I don't think you would have had any of them. You'd only have success. And that's what's ultimately going to unify this country and unify this party. We have a great Republican Party with tremendous talent. This was right after uh, Super Tuesday, guys, around six months ago, just so we're all on the same page with timing and we want to have unity, and we're going to have unity, and it's going to happen very quickly. And I have been saying lately, success will bring unity to our country. All right, so Governor Noam, all right, how do you read that? That's, you know, this is unique to politics. People don't think in those terms. They think of Republicans and Democrats and independents. He is saying his policies will succeed, and that will bring unity. How do you read that, Governor? I loved it. I loved it, Larry, when he said that. That was so perfect because it's so true. Uh, we've seen that play out in different parts of the country the last several years. The states that had the right leadership, their families there have been more successful and they're happier. If you look at my little state of South Dakota, we uh, pursued very conservative policies. People are making 30% more money than they've made before. Uh, they're having more babies than they've ever had before. Their businesses are more successful. Their taxes are lower. We've got more money in reserves. We've got a AAA credit rating. Our pension plan is fully funded. We've got all kinds of businesses moving in. And our mental health challenges are going down. Suicides are going down. And our drug overdoses are going down. That's good, guys. So President Trump knows that his policies bring success. And when you do that, People are happy and they get along and they enjoy each other. And that is exactly what we're seeing here. I can't wait to see it on a national scale. We need Donald J. Trump, guys. We need Donald John Trump. Now, uh, uh, Christy Nome was just at a Trump rally. Uh, I wanted to play this for you guys. Thank you very much, Greg. Now I'm telling you, there's never been there's never been spirit like this. This party has, and I hate when I listen to these people. You know, they say, 
while uh, Biden and Trump are extremely unpopular, I'm not unpopular. I got 92% approval rating with the Republican Party. We're not a, they like to say, Biden and Trump, don't put me with him. This guy's unpopular. He can't talk. <laughs> we have a very special woman who's hot as a politician. She's a, she's a, oh! doing an incredible job in South Dakota. She's the governor, Christy Nome. Thank you, Christy. Thank what you, do you call her, hot as a pot? <laughs> Even Trump says it, guys. MAGA, baby. Thank this you. is MAGA. This is what MAGA looks like, guys. You're looking at it. You're watching history unfold right now here on my show. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, when you were in the White House and I was governor of South Dakota, every single day I got to get up and be on offense. I could call this man in the White House and I would tell him what problem I had with the federal government or a foreign country or a trade agreement or helping a business be successful. And he would say, Christy, let's do it. We will fix it. As soon as Joe Biden got in the White House, I went on defense. All I do now is fight to protect the freedom of my people. That is the difference that leadership has. That's the difference that this man has. Let's put him back in the White House so we can be on offense. We can make America great again and we can do it with U.S. Senators like Bernie Moreno. Thank you so much for being here for Bernie. We're gonna win. We're gonna win big. Wow. Thank you very much. And you're not allowed to say it, so I will not. You know, you're not allowed to say she's beautiful, so I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I will not say it, because that's the end of your political career. If you make, <laughs> if you make that statement, that's the end of your political So I will not say that. That's so funny that Trump says it like that. He goes, I will not say that she's beautiful. I can't say it. So he didn't say it. He didn't say it. <laughs> Uh, this is actually Christy Noem exposing the truth about Kamala Harris and about the debate. Listen to this, guys. Exposing the truth about ABC. Tune in. Governor, thanks so much for taking the time. Appreciate it. All right, you've watched the uh, debate. What's your reaction? Mm -hmm. You know, I think we still don't know who Kamala Harris is or what she plans to do. I didn't hear once a detailed description of what she was going to implement to make families' lives better, how she was going to make their groceries more affordable, gas prices drop, and allow them more opportunities into the future. So that's what's shocking to me, is these moderators never once pushed her, never once fact-checked her, even when she misspoke and when she lied. And it was pretty strange to watch that dynamic go down. I feel like the American people still at the end of this debate don't really know what Kamala Harris would do. And the next question should have been, if you're going to do that, why not do that today? Prove it. You have two months, you have 50 days here to prove to the American people you are who you say you are. Do it. You're in charge. And uh, nobody challenged her on that. She should have been. When you say nobody challenged her on that, should, shouldn't that have been Donald Trump's job uh, to challenge her on some of those things? We were talking here about the fact. All right, News Nation. I mean, Trump can only do so much. It's like, they did they even F? Sorry, I don't want to cuss. But do they realize that the mics would cut off when each other, when the other person was talking? Well, would it, can Trump do that? Isn't that Trump's job? Give me a break, News Nation. That, you know, coming into this, Donald Trump's goal was to tie Kamala Harris to what Republicans view as failures in this administration, right? And that would include immigration, include inflation, et cetera. But it, it did seem throughout that Donald Trump came back to the grievances again, rather than focusing more on the future this guy sucks i'm sorry i i don't know Ugh. news nation what the heck's wrong with news nation jeez louise uh, i wanted to play this official clip of christy Nom endorsing trump at south dakota rally and guys i will not be playing any more news nation clips on my show i'm sorry that that's ridiculous i i, I apologize my friends i i do not <sighs> they they suck we need to heed this warning in this well-known quote. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. So listen, do something, get in the arena. History cannot and it should not be rewritten. We must remember what has happened in the past, learn from it and not allow those who abuse their power to ever perpetuate their harm again. It is my honor to present to you the man in the arena. 
He is a man of significance. He is the leader, the fighter that our country needs. He has my full and complete endorsement. Wow. The of the United States of America. Yeah. I will do everything I can to help him win and save this country. Christy, I'm truly honored to receive your endorsement. Very much so. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's very, it's a great honor. I get endorsements, some good, some bad. I get endorsements, some don't mean anything. Hers means a lot. Let me tell you. <laughs> Absolutely love that. Uh, such, such a beautiful, beautiful statement. Now, here's uh, I wanted to play some of uh, Christine's speech that she gave. It was absolutely beautiful listening to her talk. Let's listen on in to Christy Nome, guys. This is beautiful. Jay Trump is our <laughs> prosecuted him. But even in the most perilous moment this week, his instinct was to stand and to fight. Fight, 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 fight. is our man in the arena. He will never stop fighting for us. He will never stop and now he is bringing all of us together. Now I know that many of you are angry, but now is the time to unite and we have to get to work. We have to win the hearts and minds of every single American. Wake them up with truth and with wisdom. We need to listen to them. You can't win people over by arguing with them. Visit with your neighbors, at your job, at your church, at the gas station, or even at the grocery store. Listen, there are moments in our history, often after great hardship and tragedy, when true leaders unite our country. At one time, President Lincoln, he united our country. He delivered my favorite presidential address of all time. In fact, it's the only speech or poem or song that I ever made my kids memorize when they were young, when they were little. Wow. It was the Gettysburg Address. And it was delivered during our nation's bloodiest conflict. That speech so inspired people that they continued to fight for years and they lost loved ones in order to preserve this union we call the United States of America. Yeah. Now, at that time, President Lincoln encouraged us to take increased devotion that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that a government of the people, by the people, and, and for, for the, the people, people shall not perish from this earth. Like Lincoln, in the midst of our pain and division, Donald Trump is calling us to be touched by the better angels of our nature. As Paul wrote in 2 Timothy, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. We must not be afraid. Even in our darkest days, we have never once given up hope. So don't quit on America. If we lose this country, where else will we go that provides more freedom and opportunity for our kids and our grandkids? And I've got three grandkids and I'm counting on a whole lot more. And yes, democracy can be messy, but there is a great invisible strength to a people's union. We have shown the world that we can endure sacrifice and that we can still unite. We should still aspire to be worthy of this union, America. President Donald J. Trump is the leader we need for such a time as this. Yes, yes, yes. So now, I need you to get to work. Get out there, go do it. Don't quit. Keep fighting, keep uniting, keep talking to people. Win the hearts and minds and may God bless you. And may God continue to bless the great United States of America. Thank you. Wow, absolutely.
absolutely beautiful, guys. Now, look at Christy Noem. She just shared this uh, earlier today, this morning. She goes, this year, three detachments of SD South Dakota uh, National Guard soldiers constructed more than five miles of border wall. They fortified 20 miles worth of wall with concertina wire, and they repaired 46 breaches in the crucial area between Del Rio and Eagle Pass. I spent a day with them, helping them build the wall. It wasn't easy work. They had to clear miles of rough ground in 100 degree heat and Texas humidity, but they were glad to do it in service to our country. So Christy Nome sending her state's National Guard to help build the border wall and repair what was destroyed. Christy Nome, powerhouse of a woman, absolute <laughs> savage. New record attendance at this year's Buffalo Roundup, 24,000 people. I mean, this is a true American. True American, guys. I mean, look at this. She, go, she just shared this on Tuesday. South Dakota is a fantastic state. We have the highest birth rate of any state. Our people are having babies, and I love it. And we have the fewest overdoses per capita of any state. South Dakotans have hope. Yeah, guys, I mean, this is what you guys see. This is the, the fruit of a powerhouse of a woman uh, when you have a, a gr good leader. South Dakota was the first state to send National Guard to the southern border when Governor Abbott asked for help. Make no mistake, Kamala Harris was put in charge of the border and has willingly and intentionally left it wide open. Here is my message to the South Dakota legislator earlier this year. Let's tune in, guys. This is epic. Last week, I received a briefing from Border Patrol, and they informed me that over the last several months, as many as 4,000 apprehensions occur in just one day in Eagle Pass, Texas. December was the first month in American history with more than 300,000 encounters at the southern border. Almost three years ago, when Governor Abbott asked states to send troops to help secure the border, South Dakota was the first state in the nation to send National Guard soldiers to help. We later deployed our Lakota helicopters on a federal mission when the Biden administration needed help with surveillance of drug traffickers. Last summer, when Governor Abbott again asked for assistance, we sent more troops. Now, during my time there this last Friday, I was able to see with my own eyes what has changed. Texas has been calling their efforts and their mission Operation Lone Star. But more recently, what the cartels have been doing is pushing women and children across the Rio Grande. Many of them cannot swim. They're telling them that if they turn back, they will be shot before they reach back to the Mexican shore. While many of these women and these children are struggling and inevitably drown in the high waters, Texas Department of Public Safety personnel and officials are pulling them out of the water, performing CPR, and they're bringing them back to life. Wow. This has been happening so frequently that Texas has started calling their efforts Operation Lazarus because they're literally having to bring people back to life. So why are the cartels intentionally, intentionally drowning women and children? Why is Kamala Harris and Joe Biden not fixing this immediately? Let me know your thoughts down below, guys.